What's up guys, so iOS 18 is bringing massive changes to the calculator app. We've got a few features we've been asking you for a long time, but we also got a couple surprises. So let's get right into it. So the first change we have is a new icon. Here's what the old icon looks like, and then on my screen is the new one. The only change is just a slight change. On the bottom, the button that used to be two tiles wide is now one, and there's two buttons. It's just a slight change here. Also, the color of the icon changes when you change it from light to dark mode. That's another new feature here in iOS 18. Before, it was a gray background. Now, it's black if you have it dark. The calculator itself is gray now for contrast. You can also have tinted icons. These look pretty pretty cool if you can find something you like you basically any color here you also have the eyedropper as well and the calculator app is finally on ipad also we now finally have a backspace button so before you had to swipe across the numbers to backspace the numbers now you can just use the backspace button here you can also backspace on one of these buttons like this multiply, uh, minus, plus, etc. If you go into the scientific calculator, and I'll go into that a little bit more in a little bit. You can also backspace this stuff as well. We also finally have a calculator history. So once you've solved a few equations, just tap this menu icon on the top left. You'll see your full history it's, uh, divided by dates as well, like today, yesterday, previous seven days. And then to get out, you can just swipe right and then get into it. You can swipe left again, so you can just swipe across, which it feels really nice. And then you can also just press the menu again and it closes. And you can press edit. And then you can either delete all or you can select some to delete if you want to do that. And if you tap and hold on an expression here, you can copy the expression or copy the result. So it gives you some options there or you can just delete it. Just that equation from there. In case you haven't noticed already, it shows your whole expression on one line. So you could see that after you press enter, it has the expression above it and the answer in the white. And if you're typing and you press plus, minus, multiply, or divide, it now shows that on there. Before, it just highlighted that icon. It didn't actually show it up here. So now you can actually see your full expression on here, even if you're multiplying or adding multiple times. Now we also have a new button in the calculator, and that's right in the bottom left. This kind of filled the empty space before, that was with the zero button. It just kind of looks like a calculator, so if you tap on it, it allows you to switch calculator modes. This is extremely useful because uh, this is stuff we've never had before, so you can choose between basic, scientific, and math notes. When you're in either basic or scientific, you can turn on conversions, and this is really nice because it allows you to convert different units. Let's go ahead and check out the scientific calculator. So we'll tap on the change modes button, the calculator button, and then we'll click scientific. So we've had this before, but previously you had to turn the phone into landscape mode to see it, and you can still do that, but now you can just uh, change it to this mode, and then you'll see all the buttons like here kind of like a ti uh, 30x calculator it's all vertical it's just it looks just like it as well so if this you have parentheses so this helps you with order of operations you could do something like nine per times parentheses and then like 85 minus uh 43 so it does that first then times it by nine and then so you see it does that right there now a lot of this part isn't new, although some of these functions are a little different. I don't want to bore you guys, so if you want to skip forward, feel free to do so using the chapters below. The next part is all about the new conversions mode. The second is like a shift button that gives you more options, like instead of sine, cosine, and tangents, you have sine minus one or cosine minus one, the inverses. You could press the X to the power of 2 to square something. It shows up there, and you press enter, there you go, 81. Same thing, you can cube a number, or you can type any other exponents using the X to the power of Y, and type that so you could do 95, and that gives you a really long number. You also have E to the power of X, so you type in a number, you type in that, and then now it's E to the power of whatever number you put in. And you have the 10 to the power of exponents, so you just put in any exponents you want, and then press that, then it puts it in as 10 to the power of whatever you put, I put 4, and then you can calculate that through there. You have 1 over X, so that kind of gives you the uh, reciprocal, so it's just put in 50, and then you press the 1 over X button, that just makes it... 1 divided by 50 and then you can calculate that through there or put it in your uh, expression as a box through parentheses for the order of operations then you have your square root button then you just put in the square roots and you can press enter and because it still shows up on the expression you can combine it with other things so you can do square roots 
then maybe plus three. So it finds the square root, so that's six. The square root of nine is three, plus three, so it'd be six. You can also find the cube root of something. And same thing, you can find the x root of whatever, so you just type, put that in, and then you press whatever uh, root you wanna find. So we could put like five, for example. You have an ion or ln number, although I'm not that familiar with what that would do. And you also have logarithms, so you just press the log, and then there's a 10 below it. And you have the button that says x with an exclamation point. Again, I'm not very familiar with this one. And then you have your uh, cosine, sine, and tangent. You find the sine of numbers through there, or the cosine or tangent. And you have just E, I'm sure that helps you with more advanced algebra. But it's kind of a squiggly E, like a different font, so it's not the same E you get when you get this really long answer. And then you have double uppercase E's. Yeah, that adds just the regular E for when you get really long answers, the output. You have the RAND button if you use that, and then you also have sine H. You can put something in, really long number there, or cosine H, or tangent H. And of course you have pi, so if we do like 3 times pi, that would give you 9.4, which is 3 times pi, which is 3.145, it goes on and on. Down here you have rad and then deg, so that just changes your calculator mode for specific operations. If you press the second button to shift, that changes the e to the power of x to y to the power of x. It changes 10 to the power of x to 2 to the power of x, and then it changes the ln button here to log y and then it changes log 10 to log to 2 and then of course all your sine cosine tangents those are all negative 1 so that's just the inverse and just like the basic calculator when you enter in scientific formulas like i'll enter some uh sort of complex one here you press enter so those will enter into the history as well and if you're thinking well it seems like the calculator app on iphone is looking a lot like the ti 30 xs calculator and you would be correct because now not only do we have basic we also have scientific but th they also added math notes which i'll get to in a little bit which uh, adds basically graphing but you also do numerous other things with that and they even want to uh, step above and beyond and added conversions as well so this is a really nice upgrade Let's go ahead and check out conversions so to turn those on you just tap the calculator button in the bottom left and then turn on the convert slider and you'll see you have your conversions up top and then so you can press this up down button to swap which one you are selecting right now and then depending on which one you are selecting you can enter an amount in there so you can add, say 98 and then you can uh, swap that too so it changes uh, from pounds to kilograms or whatever units you're deciding to use. But there's not just weight like I have selected here, and you can choose all different types of units here, but you can also have different categories, so we'll go through each of those. So first you have angles. You can have an arc minute, arc second, degree, micro arc second, micro ardian, mill arc second, mill radian, a radian. And then you go to area, you have an acre, an air, a decare, a hectare, a square centimeter, a square foot, square inch, square kilometer, square meter, square mile, square millimeter, square yard, and a strema. You can go to currency, you have a very extensive list. I can't go through all of them. You have most common currencies you could choose from here, like USD, European, etc. And then you can search for here as well. Type in EU, it brings up Euros, that's EUR, you can spin that. And then you go to the other one, and then you can type in, I'm just say USD, and then you can put in US dollars, and there you go, you can convert that. And because the list is so extensive, you have the alphabetical slider on the right, so you can just slide through this, or you can just tap a letter, and it'll bring you to the top of that part of the list. Then you have data, so you can choose from bit, byte, gigabyte, gigabyte, kibabyte, kilobyte, megabyte, can't believe that exists, megabyte, petabyte, petabyte, tebabyte, or terabyte. I never knew there were pebabytes, it's interesting. However, I'm pretty sure a petabyte is worth more than a terabyte, so maybe they should switch that around, so that's kind of a little out of order. Next to energy, you have British thermal unit, calorie, an erg, foot pound, a joule, kilocalorie, kilojoule, kilowatt hour, or newton meter. For force, you have a dyne, kilogram force, newton, pound force, or pound off. Fuel, you have a gallon per 100 miles, kilometer per liter, liter per 100 kilometers or mile per gallon that's like fuel economy which can be very useful to calculate in a lot of everyday scenarios and to length 
We have astronomical unit, centimeter, decimeter, foot, inch, kilometer, light year even, meter, mile, millimeter, nautical mile, a uh, parsec, never heard of that before, I don't think, and a yard. For power, you have BTU per minute, horsepower, kilowatts, or a watt. For pressure, you have atmosphere, bar, inch of mercury, kilopascal, pascal, pound per inch, or a tor. For speed, we have foot per second, kilometer per hour, knot, meter per second, or mile per hour. Temperature, we have Celsius, Fahrenheit, and Kelvin. Time, we have day, hour, microsecond, millisecond, minutes, nanosecond, second, a week, or up to a year. And no month, although well, that kind of makes sense because, you know, every month's different. Volume, we have centiliter, cubic centimeter, cubic foot, cubic meter, a cup, fluid dram, fluid ounce, gallon, liter, milliliter, pint, quart, tablespoon, teaspoon, UK fluid ounce, UK gallon, UK pint, and UK quart. For weight, you have a dram, a gram, kilogram, long ton, metric ton, milligram, ounce, pound, short ton, slug, and stone. That was lots of different units you could choose from here, so this could be, end up being very useful for finding conversions. You don't have to go to Google anymore. I guess you could really use this if, if you're offline as well. Uh, besides the currency that needs connection with the server, it goes to Yahoo Finance. Uh, updates that down to the second as you see it says updated now so that and when you're searching through units you don't have to worry about which category is selected so as you see i'm on currency right now and i could go ahead and i could search for uh mile let's see all corrected mile per gallon there you go and as you see i don't have to be on that category to search and such and as you see each unit has an abbreviation under it so for square centimeter it says centimeter and then to the power of two like square icon and when you tap that that's what shows up on here so it doesn't take up that much space and the same thing uh you can do square mile it'll be m i squared pretty much every unit has an abbreviation with it also while you're in the conversions mode you can still do equations so you could do like a thousand say divided by 40 and then it'll, it'll show up what that is in here and you press equals and it puts 25 in just finishes the, the equation and then uses what's on that expression to convert it and from centimeter squared to inches squared and you can also do this with scientific so you do 25 squared and then you can do that you can also do a thousand q it's the same thing okay now to math notes you guys have just press a calculator button in the bottom left and tap math notes you can create a new note by pressing the new note button in the bottom right but i already have a note open so i'm gonna go to that one Math notes is essentially notes for your math problems. And when you type in math expressions, so I'll type one here, let's just do 45 plus 83. And then you see it already pops up the answer and we can just tap that and then it'll just type that in. It even puts it in a, in a different color so you know it auto solved for you. You can also do the same thing through handwriting. So this is extremely useful if you're on an iPad and you have an Apple Pencil. So we'll go ahead and say 30 eight times seven put equals and then it should all auto calculate it there, there you go and then you can take this expression and you can like resize it if it goes off the screen you can even change the color of your notes if you want to note things by color that could be useful so you see you have 12 different color options here and then you can also do no fill or you can tap the rainbow button and you could do any color you want from the color grid spectrum or from color sliders you can also use the eyedropper here as well now with this you can also create graphs so you can create a linear or exponential equation so i'll just put in like y equals 4x plus 18. Above it, it pops up insert graph, so we'll just press that, and then inserts a graph below it. And if you tap on it, you can resize it. You can you can make it tall or taller or wider or just bigger in general. And then you could recenter it so that it puts the actual equation or line in the center. If you would option here, you have this graph button that allows you to add multiple different equations if you have them typed in. There's a, a duplicate button right here in the graph. Then there's a delete button and then there's three dots. You can cut, copy, paste, duplicate, or delete. Same thing if I were to go into handwriting we'll here. We'll do y equals 5x minus 10. 
and then as you see that pops up and then we can either insert graph add to existing graph which is the one we have up there or copy this expression so let's add to an existing graph and then as you see it puts it in there and then if you click recenter it tries to show them both so this is one way if you want to have multiple equations on here you can do that really easily you can set up a system of equations you could find the solution of a system through here as well you do a two finger swipe and find where the lines meet you can do a lot of different things with this there's so much you can do with the graphs and then for here you can also assign a different color to each of them by clicking the color on the left we'll just make it green and then you swipe down from the bottom to get out of it and then you have lines of multiple different colors on it like so i said before this is basically notes for the calculator app or for your math equations so you could add all your different attachments so you can add in notes so you get attachments you can attach a file record audio which is actually new in ios 18 use photo or video take photo or video scan documents or scan text right through here none of this is anything new so we're just gonna go through the attachments and format options really quick and then we'll move on so first we have a table and you and as you see we have a few different options here we can also expand it and make it wider or taller as well which by the way this can be useful for math as well if you want to record different responses or we also have checklists for format options select the text you want to format then you could choose from bold italics underline strike through font color which is actually brand new in ios 18 numbered list bullet list or dash list indent or outdent a quote bar and either title heading subheading body or mono style if you long press you can pin lock share or delete notes other options include scanning find in note math results options which is new in ios 18 so you could choose from insert results suggest results or none you can also access recent notes lines and grids options attachment view use light background for just that note or delete and your math notes show up in the note app as well so if you want to access them from outside the calculator you can do so just by tapping math notes and all your math notes show up here with your math equations and expressions and your graphs they all show up same same format same file all that and they show up in their own folder if you go to, to the front page of notes folders it shows up under quick notes right at the top now you can also set up variables and solve algebra through here as well so we'll just put in x equals we'll do 12 and y equals 8 how about we do 2y as you see it puts in 16 it takes 8 times 2 which seems accurate but we'll do plus 3x as well and then it puts 52 so it takes 3 times 12 which is 36 plus 8 times 2 which is 16 so 16 plus 36 is 52 so that seems accurate you just press enter and then it puts that in there right there and then also highlights your variables so it tells you what was used to solve that. Same thing for handwriting, but already uses the variables you have defined in here. One thing to caution though, especially if you're setting up like slope equations or linear equations for graphs, because it doesn't have a setup as a variable, sometimes it'll confuse X as a multiplication symbol. So it will try to multiply it instead. That's just something to be careful for. Also with variables, you can create a list of items or expenses as I have here, and you can combine them together to do math with them or just combine them into a total. So that's what I'll do here. So I have frozen food, dairy, beverages, produce, and bakery, and they all, they all have a different money value. So I'll just type in frozen, autocorrect, frozen food plus dairy plus beverages plus produce plus bakery equals and then it should calculate it for me as you see it's already calculating it as i type i need to go back and add beverages i can, I can do that really easily just back it on to the end in fact you can change that out if you want if you want to put minus beverages you could do that as well let's try that. it does 50 but i see if you have all of it combined it equals 88 and it highlights what variables it's using now as you see variables with two words or if i have like commas or and symbols they're a little buggy now as you see it, it thinks frozen food it just only picks up the food part of it hopefully they fix that they could make variables go by a line by line basis so that it doesn't do that or they can just add an option for that so i know i may seem like a math teacher but trust me this is just one of many videos i have coming up soon talking about the new features in ios 18 so be sure to subscribe if you want to see that in the bottom right i have a playlist of my ios 18 coverage and in the top right is my most recent video i'll see you all next time